Aloha kakahiaka, Kapa Hawaiian FM 100.3, 99.1. And again, another edition of the Kapa Cafe. Mahalo nui to our sponsor, Kona Girl House, Brian and the gang with their daily specials. Call them today at 323-3512. All right, our special guest today, I'm very excited to have him as it's always wonderful to not only hear a young artist, but a composer and an actual <laughs> musician. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nick Wong to the Cup of Cafe. Hey, How everybody. You thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you guys so much for having me. Awesome. Super- you know, we were excited to when we and Jazz and I were talking about uh, giving you a call to bring you on to the Cup of Cafe. There's so many things we can talk about. There's so many things. And the first nice. question that came to mind was, at what age did you actually start playing an instrument or singing? Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. That's a, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, really, like, when I was in kindergarten, my best friend, he started, he's, he brought a drum pad to school. And I was, like, super intrigued, but he never shared it with me. Like, I wanted to try it, so, but he never, he never let me try it. But he's really the one that, that got me into, or inspired to start playing drums. So I was about five years old, and my first instrument was drums. And I had a teacher, and I took lessons. Um, but you know, I wasn't super into it, right? And so second grade comes around and I kind of get, like I kind of lose interest, you know? Um, but then fourth grade, I get a teacher who is actually Luke, Lucas Klepsch, um, Truth Music. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, he, so anyways, I started taking lessons from him when I was like nine years old. Um, it lasted for a couple of years and then I started taking lessons from Michael Supernaut um, and yeah and then russ mckinnon and i'm um you know i'm so that was my first instrument and that's when i first started playing i i say i I don't like to say five just because i wasn't super serious about it so let's just say nine (laughs) (laughs) but that's that's the story (laughs) but you know that when you're super famous you have to say five (laughs) i just have to exaggerate i think i was two (laughs) you know speaking of your amazing teachers um uh, as we get more into talking about your music uh, in hearing who your in, instructors are, who are bandmates of mine as well, uh-huh. is you have guys that are not only musicians, but are artists. Right. So right. I can see why at a young age you're producing your own music and you're recording already, because these are guys that not just opened up a book and say, play this. Right. right? You, you know, these are guys that are going to teach you stage presence to how to work with other guys. So you were you learning this immediately uh, upon um, starting with Luke? I, yeah, I'd say I was because um, I remember we only had a couple lessons in and he was part of the Innovations Public Charter School. Um, he was, they, Luke and Andrea were doing, um, were teaching music there, right? And so that's when I kind of got super interested. And I think we were only a couple lessons in when I had my first performance in front of everybody. So, I mean, I'd say, I'd say, yeah, I'd say definitely. So, you know, you know, Nick, you know, hold on a minute. I'm just going to take it back a little with what Jazz is saying. We're talking about the introduction to music, your right. interests. Now, how many uh, instruments do you play? Oh, um, I mean, I like to just say two now <laughs> because um, about a year ago, I got really into playing guitar and stuff. Um, and that's really what I've been doing. I've, I've kind of not been playing drums nearly as much as I used to. Um, which, which might be bad, you know, but, <laughs> but I just think it's another path that I'm going on, you know. And well, it's probably really, hard to be a front, I would know this, it's hard to be a front man on the drums. Yeah, yeah. There's this whole time when, um, when I was a drummer, like being on the drums, you, you get taught, and you would know just as well that um, you're there to support the band, right? And I always used to, um, I, I used to feel like, yeah, I'm just going to do that for the rest of my life. But really, when I actually think about it, I've always been the type of person, I'm going to, at school, they'd call it an attention whore, right? And like, I've always been the one that wanted to be that, you know what I mean? (laughs) So, so I think, I think playing guitar and, and singing is more fitting and yeah. So, so wait a minute though. So, okay. So you play guitar, you sing. Now, Jack mentioned about the production. What, what, what is that? When did that happen? Yeah. Um, well, really, like maybe in middle school, I think I was about 11, 12, I think. Um, 
And I, I was really into playing drums, right? And while I was playing drums, I wanted to record myself and record myself playing to songs. And I wanted to do YouTube videos. So that's when that kind of started happening. And as a result of that, I started writing music too, because I wanted to, um, I wanted to play my own music too. So really in middle school, I kind of started writing and recording music. And I've just kind of, you know, grown in that, in that way. You know, but for, for that matter, there's many of us want to pick up other instruments and produce our own stuff for the fact of not having to hire other guys. Right. But on your, yours is more of you want to just play all the other stuff. Um, yeah. in, in like a way, in a way, um, if, except if I'm not good at it and it doesn't sound good, then I definitely want to like hire someone else, you know? Oh, so um, you can sit there and go, oh, this ain't happening. I got to call. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Call, call, whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I'd say when I, when I wasn't super serious about releasing any music, because just, you know, it just wasn't good enough. Um, I, I, yeah, I was fine with playing everything myself. Um, but when the point came where I wanted to release my own music and I did write a song that I was like, oh yeah, I want to release this. Um, I had, I had, I played drums and I sang on it. And then Lucas Klepsch played guitar. Um, and then I had Matt Spencer play bass. So I had, I had professionals like play on it too, you know? So what, tell, what? Us, tell, tell us, I want to hear about the first release, the first song that you right. wanted to release. Tell me a little bit about how that came to be as far as composition. Right. Uh, you know, I was just sitting in here, like right where I'm sitting now, and I have this little MIDI keyboard here. And the first song that I released is Alone Again, actually. Um, I released it, I, I can't remember if it was last year or two years ago in February, but um, I, I think it was last year. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I was just sitting here and I was playing chords and there's like a G major to a D minor, you know, and like, to me, that transition was kind of, it's super simple and basic when I bring it into talk now, right? Um, but, but, but it was different from anything I really heard before and that really inspired me, just the G major to the D minor, you know, um, for the chorus. And I started singing along and I'm like, oh, I really like this, you know, for the first time you know? Wow. Um, and of course I couldn't sing at all. I really just started singing when, when that happened, you know, <laughs> when, when I got that song. <laughs> what, what was, what inspired you to get, I guess your, your sound or your vibe? Like, is it, uh, you know, cause we're, you're, you're, you live in a place where you get Hawaiian music over here, you get rock and roll over here, you get jazz musicians over here. Uh, yeah. and from, you know, listening to you, you could totally hear your your teacher's inspiration on vibe on it. But yeah. What else? What else makes the Nick Wong trip? Right. Um, well, well, really, I've I've always been into jazz, you know, I, and I've and I've played jazz like drums mostly, but I've always loved it. I've always listened to it ever since I started playing drums, you know, um, and I loved Michael Bublé. So it was a mix of jazz and pop. And I loved a lot of pop songs too, you know. Um, reggae and Hawaiian music hasn't always really been what I've been super into, even now. I'm not super into it, but um, it's, it's the mix of jazz and blues I've been into and pop music. Mm -hmm. And one of my, uh, well, my biggest inspiration is John Mayer. So um, yeah, he, he kind of came in for me. Not, not actually, I wish I met him in real life, but um, yeah, it was kind of him who really inspired that kind of sound, you know, Jack Johnson, John Mayer. So real, real quick, Nick, just to interrupt you real quick. So right. I said Ka'ea yeah, the song, right? Because we have to kind of uh, judge things first if they're formatable on the right. station, right? And right, so exactly. I send it to her and I go, it's a real cool, uh, I send it to her and I say, it's a real cool John Mayer vibe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been getting that a lot on this song. And, you know, I don't want to, I'm not trying to be like him or anything. And yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. people to think that I'm trying to be like him or copy him, but I get that a lot. And every time I don't know what to say, cause it's like, thank you. <laughs> it's like, he's it's, my a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not that you're copying. It's a sound. Good. It's a, okay, it's a cool. style. It's a genre that, you know, you're, you're kind of falling into. So you're not by any means taking a John Mayer thing. You're just carving your own way in that 
kind of John. Mm -hmm. right, right. Soon, John Mayer will go, yeah, we need to record this kind of a Nick Wong vibe. <laughs> <laughs> right? I hope so. That's the dream. <laughs> So, so Nick, we just, you know, tell me a little bit about this song that you just sent us and um, how that came to be. Yeah, um, so it's called While It Lasted and uh, really it's, it's not a super deep meaning or anything behind it. Um, it was really, everyone listening is going to be, this is so teenager, you know, but um, awesome. it was really, yeah, yeah, you guys all can relate. Well, how old are you anyway? How old are you, Nick? Oh, I'm 16 going on to 17 in August. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. So it's okay that it's a teenager. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's appropriate. We don't want to hear too much about heartbreak from a 16 year old. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Um, I try to I try to minimize the amount of heartbreak I try to include. But, um, yeah, this song was just about a little time. I had feelings for this girl all throughout kind of the past couple of years. And and we had a night we hung out um, without including too much detail, it, it was kind of fast like that, you know? So it, it's, it's super, it's not deep at all, the song. Um, it's just, you know, it was fun while it lasted and we're moving on and that's okay. But like in the bridge, uh, you know, today high schoolers, I don't know about you guys, but we call it simping, right? When you simp for a girl or when you simp for a guy, like, like you want them so bad and then you can't have them, you know what I mean? <laughs> like they're the, you know, we well, call oh God, now you're, now you're making me wonder what our word was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, no, so in, in some ways, my music kind of makes me sound like a big simp, you know? Uh, and I don't know, I, I feel like that's okay. Um, but yeah, so the bridge sounds kind of simpy, you know? But um, yeah. But here's, that, here's that, That's what gets on radio, man. But here's <laughs> what everybody can attest to having a feeling like that. Right. right. Right, right, everyone, right. no matter right. what age you are, everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I've been kind of playing with the concept of like, you know, when I'm writing, should I make it super, um, not, not super, but uh, hard to kind of, you have to think a little bit to understand the song, or should I just give it to you, you know? And this song was more um, the concept of just giving it to them, you know, the idea. Nice. nice. How, how much, how much um, being taught the way you were, how much theory uh, is involved in your, your songwriting? Because as an artist, of course, you expand and you go, you know, maybe this chord ain't supposed to be there, but it sounds so cool. Right, you, right. You know, being taught so much stuff, do, mm -hmm. has that blocked you in any way or have, or have your artist teachers taught you how to, you know, open up to weird stuff, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know, um, like I think throughout the whole songwriting process, for me at least, there are like, of course, the rules that you follow, like the theory rules and stuff, but it's not, theory has never been, I've never really been that great at it. Um, and, you know, I don't, I don't really care about the rules when I'm writing a song, you know, I just, I, it's mostly just, um, what are the listeners gonna like, you know? Who cares about the rules at this point, as long as it just sounds good. Um, but there still is that, uh, foundation you know that basic foundation of having the structure and the rules from the guidance of my teachers you know so nick you're saying that you're going to be 17 um next month what's planned yeah. after graduation you know there's so much talk about going to music school and like should you go should you not maybe you guys would know you know so i'm just trying to feel it out i i've always wanted to go to berkeley college of music in boston um like for, for years now. And, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out myself, is that really what I want to do? Mm -hmm. Or if anything, I just want to, not because I don't love Hawaii, I love it. Um, but I, I just feel like I have to get off of the island and get off of, get out of the state, you know, mm -hmm. to really expand <clears throat> musically mm -hmm. um, for, my, for my own purposes, you know. Uh, so I, I don't know if I want to go to a music college or not go to college at all and you know hard to know at 16. yeah totally right. hard to know at 60. can i just maybe if you give can it's an old man give you some input so I, i've been playing for years yeah and i'm 50 now and i find and as much as i know i find myself wishing so much that i went to school really you know and and i know enough to work 
but huh. and, and but I I just I always wish that's the the one thing that I, I never did was was get that music degree whether to have that paper just to have that that extra knowledge I mean because you have monsters that go to Berkeley and come out bigger monsters right so imagine what Nick Wong would be as a Berkeley graduate <laughs> yeah wow. Thank you. Yeah. And yeah, Nick, I mean, before they do it. But Nick, check this out though, Nick. There's something that you just said that I think is pretty profound is uh, feeling your way through this. Yeah. So, so for my other job, I actually work at Hawaii Community College, Pala Manui. So oh, right. w- with my teacher hat on, uh-huh. with my teacher hat on, I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you having a degree in your back pocket is amazing. Now taking my teacher hat off, Mm-hmm. And Auntie Ka'ea talking to you, I'm right. going to tell you to go with your na'au, with your gut feeling of what is right for you. Nobody else knows yeah. that but Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, and I, and I really appreciate and I'm grateful for your advice. So you wouldn't be all, telling all, you this if you was 18, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. No, but it all helps. I love this because it just gives me more uh, perspective on what I should do, you know. And I don't like to worry and stress about things too much. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I like to go with the flow, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, but you guys really do. I appreciate it. Awesome. It's awesome. We appreciate it's awesome. you, man. Keep it coming. We're, we're excited to see Nick Wong, the superstar, man. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. No, you guys are amazing. Seriously. Hey, Nick, before we close up today, um, do you have any platforms on how, how, how you share your music and or social media and how people can follow you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, all my music is released on Spotify and Apple Music and all the major listening platforms. Um, it's on YouTube, too, if you don't have any of that. And it, you can get it for free on YouTube. Everybody goes to YouTube because they don't have anything else. Uh, <laughs> and then um, on Instagram, I'm at Nick Wong Music. And then no spaces, no numbers, no, no, yeah, no characters. Um, and then Facebook too, at Nick Wong Music. It's a page. Um, and yeah, come and friend me on Facebook too, you know? Awesome. Um, wow. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks, awesome. Nick. Thanks, Nick, thank so much for joining us. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me.